Okay. Um, I'm testing two cards, a uh, 420 megahertz Wi-Fi-like device. It's broadband and it uh, ostensibly should work at, at least one megabit per second, hopefully better. I've done this test before and from here to a place called Sunny's Place and we were able to get um, uh, 2.5 megabits per second and the download is about 300 kilobytes per second and also we're running video, a piece of software called YoCam. So the link works. At 13 miles we can say with the Zaggle Communications data card it works. So you're testing inside of a larger capability called mesh networking. Well, not, not, not necessarily. Right now I'm just doing point to point. Before we could do a mesh, let's see if the point to point links work. Right. And so what's the equipment we need for point to point? Well, the routers are configured um, you know, they're configured from point to point. I have one router configured as a access point and the other router is con configured as a client. Just like Wi-Fi for a laptop consumer, it's everything you know about Wi-Fi except it's on 420 megahertz. And it runs, these radios run at about a half a watt. So using good antennas at a half a watt with line of sight, the claim is you can go 50 miles. So not today, um, hopefully we'll be able to do a 50 mile test. I guess I can put this down. Now, the purpose of today's test is twofold. I want to compare Doodle Labs from Singapore and equivalently the Zaggle Communications card um, from Canada to see which works better so we can make recommendations. And I suspect they're both going to work equally well. Um, the advantage is from Canada that they have a U.S. distributor, so it's just a matter of getting a UPS, so not, not a problem. So what are the two locations that we're going to be operating from right. today? One location is the patio here next to the Pollock dining room of the Skyline Lodge Resort. Um, it's a very nice patio and it just so happens there's a clear view to this gap in the, um, what's the name of that mountain range? Massanutten. Massanutten. Massa... Massanutten. Massanutten. Ten times in a row. Massanutten. So that's Route 211 and at halfway up the mountain is a restaurant with a parking lot called Sunny's Place and I've been there before. And then higher up it looks like there's a place where I can get off the road and try it on top of the ridge. And if that doesn't work we'll just downgrade back the mountain. So what are the t what's the distance between these two points? 13 miles. Oh yes, thank you. 13 miles. Or 12.8 to be exact. And so, and so we are going to now, sh the two things we're looking for today is signal quality and, and speed. And because, speed. Because faster is better. Okay, well, we're going to continue this once we get the equipment set up. Right. Thank you. So, here is a view from the overlook. Right. So, Sunny's Place is about 13 miles from here through that notch in the trees. And so, it's basically line of sight. So, for today's A B test between two mini PCI data cards for broadband communications in radio we are testing two vendors one is Zaggle and then the other one is Doodle Labs it's related it's 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 Wi-Fi like yeah right on 420 right. it's a packet it's a packet. Well, it's TCP/IP. It's right. imagine wireless networking, yeah. but on 420 right. instead of 2.4 gigahertz. In fact, the routers don't know anything about ham radio. Standard generic routers. In fact, where's a router? Here's a router. Yeah. So you use kind of a transverter, or how well, do you, how do you yes. The answer, the short answer is yes. This, this is from um, Doodle Labs. Do you mind if I video you? Do you Not mind? at all. Not this at is, all. This is a, from Singapore Doodle Labs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they take in the Athros. Wi-Fi chipset for 2.4 gigahertz, and then added a down transverter. I see. Down converter, down transverter, and then you have a pigtail to for uh, for 20. Actually, mm -hmm. uh, this this router, this is from Ubiquity, a uh, big manufacturer, and this is a discontinued product. It's called the Router Station Pro. So it's got local area, local area, local area, wide area. And I've configured it so these, are, so you actually have four connected together. But the nice thing is power of Ethernet. It's only like a watt, half a watt. Yeah, this is a half watt. Wow. That's why exactly. Wow. And 
So if you were operating under low power or alternate power sources, you're off the grid like with solar or wind, it's much easier to keep this operational. Oh yeah. Well, you can run this with solar. Each node could be a solar cell. A half watt you could go, I mean, I'd take, you know, uh, I work portable sometimes 100 watts and your juice runs out pretty quick. Uh -huh. Okay, so. so this is, okay, so explain what you just connected. You connected the... LMR 400 coax to the antenna, to the pigtail, it's called a pigtail. Um, Inside the rack. Okay, so now we are hooking up the power source, and you, you're hooking up what, David? What kind of a battery is that? That's a, a 18 ampere hour, 12 volt battery, connected to a little watt meter, tells the voltage and the current. This is a 100 DC, 12 volts DC to 120 volts AC inverter uh, to convert to power the power over Ethernet device. So this is green. POE goes here, and the yellow one goes here, and that will, yeah, okay, you just drop it, okay, and my power to my laptop goes there. The reason why I power my laptop, so it's fully bright, the, see, oh, that's fine. And they dug down, and they said there's more of the statues on the computer. Okay, and then turn on the uh, the file server, HFS, free software, hypertext uh, file server. It's a, it's a mini web server that does only one thing, serve files. Very, very nice. Okay. So, oh, okay, so I need to connect to that. Let's check our IP address. I mean, for this project, these laptops are only used for this project. I don't misconfigure anything. Uh-huh. Uh, let's just check. Uh, <laughs> local area network and details. We are good. Okay, so now the plan is to go to this the other destination 13 miles from here, right. correct? And set up the same configuration at the other spot. Except it'll be a client PC, not a. Uh, it'll be a client router and not an access point. And route. you did that with the software. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. DDWRT, you configure it. Okay. And and, and the, the router has a little flash memory, so it remembers the settings. Okay, great. And so you're going to be testing today what again? Do doodle Labs. Okay, to see their speed. Yeah. And their signal strength. Yeah, right. Great. At 0.5 watt yeah, transmission. Well, yeah, it's great. All, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. So we'll talk to you in a little. So, so what were the so what were the results the the, the uh, stuff works both cards work. Mm -hmm. yeah, what's the quality the signal strength uh, the speed? At my end, I was getting twenty five percent. Was it twenty five percent? Four. One number was fourteen. Yeah. The well, the was client 20. was getting twenty five percent, and we were getting four point five megabits per second when we started. Doing, playing with the antennas, things got messed up, and there was it was a wrap. Yeah, we had somebody come by that said we ought to be working with omnidirectional rather than directional antennas. So, so can you yeah. speak to that? And you know, that that's next to my list. So the question is, when you have two of these things with a mountain range in the way, what do you do? So what you do is to put on the mountain range an omnidirectional antenna configured with one of these routers as a bridge. In, in, in the, if you go to the local consumer store, they call it as a range extender, but what it is is a Wi-Fi bridge, same technology, and so it would extend the range across the mountain. So that's next on my list. But what I like to do next, when it cools down a little bit in September, is to do that 50-mile test with stacked Yagis and you know go for broke. <laughs> so when do we start with the mesh nodes? The, more than two. When, do you, oh, when are you going to get to that? Well, the first thing I want to do, a client, a bridge, and a access point. So that's kind of like, not a mesh node, not a mesh network, but that's, that's already a network because it's got more than two in, in, in the network. If it's just two endpoints, then it's just a link. When you have three, it's already a network. It's a minimal network. Mesh, I got to learn how to configure these radios to be mesh networking. With mesh, me ne mesh networking, all the radios are peers. They're all clients and service at the same time. Very, very nice. Uh, and so for DDWRT, you have to learn how to configure that. 
and they don't have a GUI for that. It's all command line oriented. Uh oh. Really <laughs> and then and then one of those nodes can be a gateway to the internet. Yeah, or I wouldn't say a gateway to the internet, but a gateway to another network, whatever that is. Or to other applications. Well, an application runs on a computer, and a computer is typically connected to routers. Right. So if you had like uh, video cameras, or you had, for Rep instance, walkie-talkies, how would walkie-talkies well, connect? Well, what we needed to run an application such as Akaga, which is an open source version of mm -hmm. something like Skype. Skype has video and audio, or, or, or only audio if you turn off the video. Right. And so I need to find a nice piece of software that does audio. So we have much to do. Tons to do. My to-do list, which is known as future continuing work, you can't call it the to-do list, you right. got to do continuing work, right. is longer than on my arm, but it'll keep us busy for the next well, year or two. Well, David, W2, LNX, thank you so much for really interesting day and exciting experiment results. Right. Any thank last you. words? Oh, one of the things, so this is long haul, mm -hmm. and we need to figure out how to connect them to the, the um, what, HSMM mesh nodes with um, the run on Wi-Fi. So the Wi-Fi mesh network would be like the local area mm -hmm. wireless network, and these would be long haul networks. So the question I have, can we create a super mesh network with these as the backbone? So mesh of meshes. Backbone? That's really the goal, because pipes are nice, but you gotta pass traffic over them. Great. And you've addressed the fact that this can be integrated with our existing yeah, 802.11. It, 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 well, it, it's, it's sure, TCP IP. It's, it's Ethernet. The, the interface between routers is what? A piece of Cat5. That's the interface. So if you can configure them and they can talk to each other, and you can learn how to do routing tables, you can, you can create that. Yeah, you, you can do all that. Terrific. And I'm learning how to do that, and I, as an electric kid, you know, the nice thing about ham radio, you can learn about all the stuff in the gutter, so to speak. Right. You know. Right. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you very much. Oh yeah. So. Okay. Thank you.